friends. So I want to make a quick video uh, showing you a, a hive that has a lot of bee activity on the front of it, almost bearding, but not quite. So you can see these two hives here. You know, this one over here is, is you know, normal bee activity. There's lots of bees going in and out, but there's not a beard of bees or an excessive amount of bees at the entrance. This one, however, has almost uh, a beard of bees, not quite, but when I see a hive with a lot of bees on the front of it, whether it's a beard or just a lot of uh, activity like this one has, I'm not, first of all, I'm not usually concerned. Even if there's a beard of bees kind of hanging down a little bit, that's really common to see in the evenings uh, as all the foragers return uh, and they don't want to crowd the hive and overheat the hive so all the foragers can kind of hang out on the front of the hive in the evenings. That's, that's really common to see. But when I do see a hive with this much bee activity on the front and excess bees, or if I see a beard, the one thing I do is a quick check and make sure I have enough space in my boxes. If all of these boxes are full of bees, I'm absolutely gonna add another box to this hive to make sure it's not getting ready to swarm. So it uh, doesn't have to take a lot of time, but when I see this much activity, I just do a really quick check, often of the top box, to see, you know, hey, is that top box full? And sure enough, this top box, I see bees between every single frame. It's almost completely full of bees. Sometimes a lot of excess bees in the front is an indicator that it's time to add another box. Not always, don't rely on that exclusively, but it's an indicator. So I'm looking at this box and this top box, it's hard to see because some of the bees have run down, but it's pretty much completely full of bees and the box underneath it is completely full of bees. So in this situation, I'm gonna add a fourth box so that they don't think about swarming. So this is a hive that's obviously very strong. Their, their, their two brood boxes are full of bees. Their third honey super up on top is full of bees. They, they need another box. Um, and, and so we're gonna add another box. And I, I do this in the springtime. You know, if they were, if this was all full in the summer or the fall, I wouldn't bother adding another box. You know, three boxes is plenty. But going into a honey flow in the springtime when swarming is still a risk, and they're getting ready to bring in a ton of honey and store it in the supers. I'm gonna go ahead and add a fourth box so they don't get any ideas about swarming and they've got plenty of room for those bees. I wouldn't really add a fifth box until these, the, you know, until this third and fourth box are pretty full of honey. But once this box and the next box I'm gonna add are about 80% full of honey, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, a, uh, a fifth box. So stay ahead of your bees, especially this time of year. Uh, to keep them from swarming and you don't want them to fill up all their space in your honey supers and start storing all that honey down in the brood box because that's when you can run into um, uh, um, issues with them overcrowding the brood nest with uh, with nectar and forcing the queen to uh, have well making it so the queen has nowhere to lay honey bound i blanked on the word honey bound is the word i'm looking for so when they fill up the brood nest with nectar instead of brood uh, we call that being honey bound, so we don't want that to happen.